you've got questions, O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge, just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. All right, it's County Mosley of HBCU Legends Podcast on Sports Illustrated. I'm here with Coach Daryl Stewart. What's going on, Cole? How you doing, Mr. Mosley? Great weekend for college football. Yeah, definitely. And we're talking about week 10 in college football. And uh, we had some good matchups early on on Halloween. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what's happening, and preview some of the games, give our predictions, and also just talk about what's emerging in college basketball for HBCUs as well. So stay tuned. Uh, Go to hbculegends.net. You can read all of our content online at Sports Illustrated, and you can also go to HBC Legends on all social media platforms and check out what we are putting down and showing out. All right, Coach, the big one, Halloween night, North Carolina Central versus South Carolina State, Chinnis Berry versus Trey the Truth Oliver. Let's talk about it. What's your thoughts? Well, you know, like Coach Tinsbury said, the mailman got to go to work. And they went to work <laughs> on the North Carolina Central uh, Eagles. And, you know, I just want to say hats off to Coach Tinsbury and how he uh, turned that culture around in South Carolina State so quickly. Uh, what a great job he's done there. Uh, Wish him the best as he continues his coaching career. And emerges into the heavyweight championship role in the MEAC as the number one head coach in the MEAC. The throne, and yes, I said that I had to say that because guess what? I cannot believe Trey the Truth Oliver did not prepare his team better than this against Tennis Berry. And, and the reason why I say that, uh, Mr. Mosley, his offense just you to get a get, if you got to get a team wound up for a game like this, Mr. Uh, Mosley, then your team's not ready. Uh, his his offense was flat from the beginning. They came out um, the second half flat, even though they started scoring. But you know it's the championship game. And if he can't motivate his players to get up for that, then something is wrong. Offensively, they just didn't have it. You know, and I don't think that South Carolina State was just that better than North Carolina Central. But preparation is a must. Um, They couldn't get anything going on offense. I don't know if it was the coach's fault. But players have to have that sense of urgency. And um, you just didn't see it in the game. South Carolina State had that sense of urgency, and that's why you see them productive and winning that football game. I'm going to tell you one thing South Carolina State had that I did not recognize, especially when they first went against Florida a and They have some speed. Yeah. On both sides of the football. That's what was very evident to me, and – the defensive backs for North Carolina Central could not hang with those guys and, and the wide receivers. Right. And I was surprised. Well, in the second half, South Carolina State did take a couple of shots, but those shots were not connecting. But early on, that first drive, I think it was an 85-yard, 11-play drive from uh, South Carolina State, they took it to those guys. Uh, Eric Phoenix was, was it five or six in the drive? And 
he he threw some targets down the field and phew, golly that that young man high Kate Caden high whoo he is something to see uh in college football man not just black college football in college football I think he's going to be one of those stars to emerge next season that we would see in talking about uh his performance as well as uh, the other, that big tight end they had as well. He did a, a fine job. Tony, his name is Tony. He did a great job for those guys as well. So right now, South Carolina State, they defeated NCU 24-21. to They controlled their destiny in the MEAC. How do you see this going forward? Uh, I don't think it's going to be even close. I think uh, South Carolina State is just so much stronger than everybody else, um, better prepared. And um, if, if Chinese Bear is at the helm, you know, hey, they're going to win out and they're going to uh, represent the MEAC in the uh, Celebration Bowl. Wow. Wow. It, it's just remarkable to see uh, what happened, especially that fourth quarter, how the Bulldogs were able to move the ball so effectively, right? Um, I take that back. It was not 11 plays. It was 10 plays, 85 yards, and they ate up a lot of clock, too. That's another thing that was so surprising, Coach. How much clock they were eating up in the game, especially that first half. It just kept the Eagles off balance, off schedule. Looked like they couldn't get into any type of rhythm with their quarterback, Walker Harris. Um, so you talk about a 10-play drive. Uh, then the second drive for the touchdown, it was an 11-play, 81-yard drive. And that one only took a minute and 40 s- seconds off the clock. Uh, so, and what was uncharacteristic, and you, you kind of brought this up, how the lack of preparation might have been there or – was it a lack of preparation or could there have been some nerves on the Eagles standpoint? The extended drives with silly penalties from time to time. That was so uncharacteristic of a North Carolina central team. What's your thoughts there? You know, Kyle, people have been saying all year long how coach Trey Oliver was carrying his team. And now I see what the Morgan state fans have been are, are so much on Coach Wilson about. If you really look at this team, Kyle, North Carolina Central really doesn't have a lot of talent. Hmm. Yes, really look at besides the running back. And, the, you know, they handed out to him quite a few times, but no no type of sense of urgency to, uh, that the players had like South Carolina State had. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I mean. Uh you just see a lot of uh, lack of urgency in this North Carolina Central team, and I'm very surprised. You remember when they played Jackson State, it was a different ball club. Mm-hmm. It was. Not, yeah, yeah. It was a different ball club. Oh, you mean Alabama State, Alabama State. Early. No, I'm sorry, Alabama State. Yeah. And yeah, so was. it was a different ball club, and now you get into a championship game, a lot of people disappointed. And I'm I'm not going to blame it all on Coach Trey Oliver because of the fact they have a winning record. Sometimes as players, you just got to have that sense of urgency. And they just didn't have it in a big game like this. And it was just very surprising. And I I feel for them going down the stretch. Hmm. Well, Jenders Berry's that 1-0 philosophy. Win one game. We're one and oh, that's it. That's it. That's how he has to go into it. He has three games left on the schedule. Uh, the Bulldogs have to go and face. Let's see. Let's pull up their schedule, guys. I think their next game is against who? Well, anyway, let's. I, I'm pulling up the schedule that's coming up. Uh, they have to, to face a. Morgan State team, they have to, oh, next week they have to face Howard in D.C. Then after facing Howard, they have to face Morgan State in Baltimore. And then they come back home and they face a dangerous Spartans team with Coach Odoms. 
uh, who has upset on his mind <laughs> right now. Um, I think Coach Oldham's, man, wouldn't that be something? Coach Oldham's run the table in the MEAC? Yeah, it'd be a big, that would be a big if. <laughs> so what you trying to say? <laughs> I mean, the way those bulldogs are playing right now. And then, and then Kyle, I want you to, uh, I want you to kind of elaborate on what the strength of the of the South Carolina State Bulldogs, man. They were so much stronger than North Carolina Central up front. Hmm. I mean, man, I mean, I saw it in the first half and then saw some signs of it in the second half. I mean, a physical, physical football team. And um, I was just very shocking to see them you know, kind of manhandling North Carolina Central up front. But I'm going to say this. You, you've, <clears throat> you're going to see that today in the Texas Southern versus FAMU game as well. You have a physical offensive defensive line. The same thing in South Carolina State. Physical offense defensive line. The only concern I have with South Carolina State is the fact that when early on, when they could not pick up two, three yards up front and, and running up the gut, they were having problems. They were being stymied, right? right? But when they needed that one yard, remember this, guys, that fourth and two, I believe. Oh, fourth, yeah, fourth and, yeah, it was fourth down. And when Coach... Barry said, hey, we're going to get this yard. He didn't He didn't flinch. I was surprised. I thought he would probably try to kick a field goal and, you know, and go up by six points. But he said, no, we're going to get this yard. And they ran it where? Up the gut. <laughs> I was so, that shocked me, man. And they picked up the yard. But I'm going to take you back to play before that. On a third down and 21, they let Eric Phoenix get out of the pocket and run for 20 yards. Crazy. Yeah, Eric Phoenix has emerged into one of my top players in HBCU for the Player of the Year Award, along with Jacoby and Morgan and Eric Mulligan. Eric Phoenix is a dynamic kid. He's a special kid because anytime you can move up from the division two ranks and learn that playbook of Chinese Beard, then come up to the division one rank and learn another playbook, well, a different playbook. Um, just a special kid. It shows his integrity. It shows his character towards the game of football, how he's committed at the quarterback position. Uh, Kudos to him and hope he does a great job uh, going through these next couple of games. The Bulldogs are rising. Phoenix is rising as well. Uh, Phoenix has passed for his fourth straight 300-plus yard game. He is the first and only player in the MEAC to be able to hit that milestone this season. And the you know, the Bulldogs are now improved to 6-2, and 2 two and zero overall in the MEAC. Uh, NCCU falls to six and three and two and one in the league right now. And uh, we just look at how this team is situated and we kind of forget about this too. Central was nationally ranked by the FCS in two different polls. One FCS poll, they were 19th. The other, they were 21st. And does that put the Bulldogs up into the ranks of the big dogs? Yeah, I think they're right behind Jackson State in, in, in every uh, category, Kyle. Um, you know, they're just playing lifestyle football right now. And um, I just don't see – with everybody having so many quarterback problems, man, even in the MEAC, you look at uh, the same issues and how um, – Eric Phoenix is leading the helm of all those quarterbacks. Um, I just don't see anybody um, coming close to the South Carolina State Bulldogs. 
Okay, right now, South Carolina State is at the top of the MEAC standings. Then it's followed by North Carolina Central. Norfolk State is 1-1 one one in third place, but they have a 3-6 overall record. Howard is at 0-1, and, and Morgan State, as well as Delaware State, they equal Howard's record at 0-1 in the conference right now. So, Norfolk State. Interesting, interesting. They have that game against South Carolina State next week. Uh, but before they get to North Carolina, uh, I mean, South Carolina State, uh, no, at the end of this year, I apologize, guys. At the end of the season, they have to play South Carolina State. But today, they have to play Morgan State. That's going to be a big one for them, right? Uh, but Damon Wilson. In order to keep pace, he has to be able to win the game as well. They made too many mistakes, I heard, last week against um, North Carolina Central, uh, the Morgan State team. Right, right, right. And, you, you know, uh, that's the same, you know, um, thing I got out of Morgan, you know, from their fans. Uh, they're just constantly making too many mistakes. Should have beat uh, North Carolina Central. From what I'm told, they had the better team, but it didn't happen. And when you look at this North Carolina Central team, you know, uh, they probably should have won the game. And that's why their fans are disgruntled. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I don't know what Coach, you know, Coach Daniel Wilson, you know, they say they have quarterback issues too. So, you know, hey, let's let's hope these quarterback issues save these head coaches because it's not looking good. I don't think they're going to get rid of – Coach Wilson. Uh, I think Coach Wilson still has a pretty good schedule ahead. No fork, then Delaware State. That's a winnable game. They may lose against South Carolina State, and they can possibly win against Howard the final game of the season for those guys. So um, is that the record that Coach Damon Wilson wanted, especially coming up from Boozy, uh you know, I, I don't think so. No, Bowie, uh, I don't think so. So, I, I, I right now, man, Chinnisbury, in my opinion, has put on a clinic on how to come in at your first season and make a statement. We'll be back in two and two. This is Coach. Daryl Stewart, as well as Kyle T. Mosley of HBCU Legends Podcast. I'm Kyle T. Mosley of HBCU Legends. I love rooting for the underdog, and this underdog you would love playing because they give you the advantage to win. Join the other 5 million happy players who have won over $2 billion on underdog because it's so easy to be able to cash in on all of your favorite athletes' performances. Compete against other players just by selecting higher or lower on two or more player stats, and you can win up to 1,000 times your money. For example, two of our favorite Heisman hopefuls who are also HBCU alums are Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders. Let's say Shador racks up higher than two passing touchdowns next week, we win. Let's say Travis gets lower than two touchdown receptions, we win. So just cook up the entries the way you want it to be and win real cash prizes all football season long. Underdog is the best place to play like a champion. You get to be able to download the app today, use the promo code HBCU Legends, and get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. Hmm, let me repeat that. You download the app today you use promo code HBCU Legends and you get $1,000 in bonus cash instantly? That's right. So HBCU fans, you can use Underdog Fantasy, join Coach and I, get ready to be able to win. You can do your pickums, you can do your higher or lower. It doesn't matter. You make the call, use Underdog. You must be 18 years or older or 19 and older in Alabama or Nebraska, 19 and older in Colorado for some games, and 21 and older in Massachusetts and Arizona. And present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Board in Colorado, concerned about your play? Call 1 800 Gambler, visit www cpdamaline.org in Arizona, go to 1-800-NEXT-STEP or 800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342 in New York. Call 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. All right, coach, let's talk about these first year coaches across HBCU football right now. And you look at the job that Chinnis Berry has done with South Carolina State. But you also have to look at Chris Dishman. He has had two big wins, could have had three big wins uh, when they let the 
They let the Jaguars get off the hook when we knew who they were. <laughs> uh, so, but all in all, man, and there was another first year coach that's doing pretty cozy. Cozy is doing pretty good as well in his first season. Talk about the first year coaches, and then I want to talk about T.C. Taylor, but just give your opinion on those first year coaches. Well, definitely, uh, they're all doing a great job going into their first year. You can see uh, most of them had their own philosophies and brought in a plan. You got to have a plan. now. And when you look at the experience level of these coaches, of course, Chase Berry rises to the top because he's been there before. He's been in Blue Blood programs. And I want to say this, Kyle, with the merging of African-American coaches right now, you can best believe, and, and a lot of people know Coach Berry in the football landscape. He's been around. Uh, he's been West Coast, East Coast, North, South. You can best believe that if he wins out and get to the Celebration Bowl his first year, a raise is probably not going to do because so many, you're talking about job openings right now. You look at what Coach Simmons did, he's gone. You look at what Coach Prime did, he's gone. So the NCAA now, you got to have so many African-American coaches. And so I don't know, but a little birdie told me, be careful, South Carolina State. If they don't come up with the funds, you can easily see somebody coming after Coach Chinese Berry. Another thing is it's going to help Coach Chinese Berry. The media loves him. And that's what he has over a lot of these head coaches. He understands <laughs> that because he's been in the he's been in the Grammys. He's been at the Southern. He's been at the big blue blood programs. And he knows he has to have the media involved in the head coaching position. And so I say that to say be careful because right now, you know, you hear Coach Prime might be leaving. You just, you just don't know, but a lot of eyes are on Chinese Bear. And I, I'm going to say this right here on, on um, the Kyle T. Mosley show. <laughs> it's our show, Coach. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this right now, Kyle. In year one, I hadn't seen this done from a first-year coach. Because, you know, a lot of people say that D'Amico Ryan, in fact, he did it in the NFL. Of course, he got a big <clears> race. But I I just don't see Chinese Berry. If he goes to the Celebration Bowl, of course, these teams are going to come after him. South Carolina, State, South Carolina State could be lucky to keep him next year. Because Man, that's I'm – that's, that that's... Say, I'm saying that to say Eric Fennis is a senior – and if he wins it in one year, he probably be gone the next year. Well, I told you so, Coach. I told you. I told you. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I told you Chinnis Berry was the man. I remember a couple seasons ago when I was touting Benedict. People were like, oh, isn't Benedict in high school, um, a little bit above a high school program? Uh, when I told one of these prominent ADs to, to talk to Coach Barry about their job opening, oh, they're doing pretty good as a D2 school, aren't they? Man, come on. Chinnisbury is what Chinnisbury is, a football coach coach and that's what we want right we want to see football coaches who can inspire lead and put a plan into action and implement that plan throughout a whole season not just one game throughout a whole season and that's what he's done uh you look at the other first year coaches let, let's take mickey joseph mickey joseph came from d1 programs uh we talked about North Nebraska, right? He was at Nebraska, and he had a meltdown at a press conference. Uh, we look at Terrence Graves. He's bided his time, 
and his program is winning right now. But he also was smart enough. He did like Henry Ford. I may not be the smartest guy in the room, but I'm going to hire some smart guys. So he hired what? Fred McNair, Totten, and a couple other guys to be able to run this program. Right now, they're leading the SWAC West. You look at Chris Dishman, another guy. Hey, he's going to hire some smart guys or some guys who have NFL experience, like Kimball Anders, who is the running back coach over there at uh, Southern University. So you have guys who, in my opinion, have done a great job assembling great staffs. You know, Cozy uh, is another one. A lot of people didn't really give him much of a chance and. If he would have, I guess, called some different plays <laughs> that final three minutes of the Jackson State game, we'll be talking about something totally different here. Uh, you know, so right now we have, I think the cream is rising to the top in some of these programs. And I think right now we are in a good situation when it comes to HBCU football. Let me ask you this, Kyle. And I I was asked this question on another radio show the other day. What is the difference between Coach Barry and the coaches that you just named? I would run through a brick wall for Coach Barry. Right. The energy. The energy, the the passion, the the charisma, right? Right. You know, uh, and and that's what I was telling you guys on Ralph Cooper's show a couple seasons ago. I said, after interviewing him, you could see that he was onto something. Because recall when Coach Prime left, you and I had many discussions about this, right? When Coach Prime left, who was the leader of HBCU football? In your in your opinion, just give me a, cu- a couple of names. It's Coach Simmons. Coach Simmons and who else? Coach Barry. No, 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 no. We weren't even talking about Coach Barry, but I'm talking the the D one schools, Trey Oliver and Coach Simmons, right? Right, right, right. All right. So if you had to put Trey Oliver, Coach Simmons, and Chinnis Barry all in one lineup. All excellent football coaches. Coach Simmons is not a rah-rah guy. He's a cool guy, right? right? Coach Oliver is not a rah-rah guy, but he's straightforward and straight-to-the-point guy. Coach Barry is a rah-rah guy, but he's a cool guy and a straight-forward guy. He got all three. He's got... He's got all three, and he knows how to, like you say, leverage the media as well. So right. Coach Barry, when I asked him for an interview on Black Sports Insiders when we were kicking off the show this season, he immediately agreed to it, immediately agreed to it, and I appreciate him for that. He didn't say no He's never turned down the opportunity to answer a question, even by telephone or in person. When you see him, he's always been very accommodating. And that's rare. Right. Because I've been on the field with some coaches that they'll run off when they see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, man, I had one coach, every time he would see me on the field pregame, he was going a different direction. <laughs> okay. Because he, he, he's like, oh, damn, that Mosley, he come. But anyway, um, but all seriousness, you've got to be able to, and, and coach, that's what Coach Prime was saying. He, he gave you guys the blueprint on how to be able to set up a program in HBCU use and leverage media, social media to be able to not only, because it's not only about 
just having yeah. conversations with the media people, right? Right. But this is guess who's watching these these shows and listening to these podcasts and listening to what you're saying? Hmm. The four and five star player. There you go. Can I? I didn't know anything about this coach. Let me see what's going on with this guy. Is this somewhere I would like to go? Is this a coach I would like to play for? Right? Right. That's what we have in Coach Barry. I think you can have it in Coach Oliver as well. But Coach Oliver has to be willing to not look angry all the time. Well, you know, a uh, couple of North Carolina Central fans, you know, you talk about the money, you know, you hear a lot of things in North Carolina Central that you really like, uh, is that what's going on? You know, the financial struggles that they're having. Yeah, we brought that up early this year, remember? Yeah, so you can kind of see it because – but like I say, besides that running back, I really didn't see. Uh... Well, that uh, wide receiver quick was pretty good. Uh, those two wide receivers who had the long touchdowns, those guys were pretty good. But the thing was, they weren't consistent throughout the game. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah, they they weren't like consistent. Most of like, like you can tell, South Carolina State has a, a – a bundle of talent on they, on both sides of the ball on their team. You just couldn't tell that with North Carolina Central. So um, that's fair. Can, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair analysis, man. Uh, because I was wondering what was happening. Why were they so off? Why they couldn't get it running? Why you have Jamari Taylor in that backfield? Why couldn't you get him out on space one on one with a linebacker or someone right. to that nature? Uh, kind of sort of what the Saints used to do with Alvin Kamara. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Just everybody was shocked, and you know, even you hear Jay Walker talking about it. This is just look like a totally different team. And, um, you, you know, what could have been a Thursday night football game or the players just or, – or could the stage been a little bit too big, you know. Uh, but you can just tell that it was something off about this team, Kyle. Yeah, they had some jitters, man. And, they were, like I said, they were making mistakes that yeah. – that's not typical of a Trey Oliver team. Right. And coach, let's just be honest. Sometimes it's just not your year. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. It sometimes it's not your year. Uh, think about this: they lost three, no, four year starter Davius Richard, right? right. Um, you have Walker Harris, who is a very good quarterback, but. Like Jay Walker said, he has to be in rhythm to get rolling, you know. And if you have a defensive secondary that's going to put pressure on you from getting into rhythm, it's going to make your job hard. And you saw that's what happened, as well as the defensive line was coming at him. <laughs> they were coming at him. So that also was an issue. Look, we'll be back in two and two. Uh, guys, don't forget to follow us at HBCU Legends on all the social media platforms as well as go to HBCULegends.net. We'll be back. I'm Kyle T. Mosley of HBCU Legends. I love rooting for the underdog, and this underdog you would love playing because they give you the advantage to win. Join the other 5 million happy players who have won over $2 billion on underdog because it's so easy to be able to cash in on all of your favorite athletes' performances. Compete against other players just by selecting higher or lower on two or more player stats, and you can win up to 1,000 times your money. For example, two of our favorite Heisman hopefuls who are also HBCU alums are Travis Hunter 
and Shador Sanders. Let's say Shador racks up higher than two passing touchdowns next week, we win. Let's say Travis gets lower than two touchdown receptions, we win. So just cook up the entries the way you want it to be and win real cash prizes all football season long. Underdog is the best place to play like a champion. You get to be able to download the app today, use the promo code HBCU Legends, and get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. Hmm, let me repeat that. You download the app today, you use promo code HBCU Legends, and you get $1,000 in bonus cash instantly? That's right. So HBCU fans, you can use Underdog Fantasy, join Coach and I, get ready to be able to win. You can do your pickums, you can do your higher or lower. It doesn't matter. You make the call, use Underdog. You must be 18 years or older or 19 or older in Alabama or Nebraska, 19 or older in Colorado for some games, and 21 and older in Massachusetts and Arizona. And present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Board in Colorado. Concerned about your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Visit www.ncpgambling.org. Here in Arizona, go to 1-800-NEXT-STEP or 800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342. In New York, call 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. All right, go. We are back, man. So basically, we got some good young bloods, uh, some emerging, I guess, emerging talent that's coming out of the HBCU coaching ranks. But one coach was given a contract extension yesterday and quietly given a contract extension. <laughs> And that comes from your your neck of the woods, your blue, your blue bloods, Coach T.C. Taylor. He got a contract extension year two. What was that saying about Coach, man? <laughs> and congratulations to Coach T.C. Yeah. Taylor. He's done in year two. Yeah. Uh, expectations at Jackson State. Uh, but, Kyle, you know, a lot of people don't know what it is. And people were saying, you know, was it the 600 Coach Prime guy? It, it, a lot of people keep keeping it quiet. A lot of people are scared to say what it is. So I, I've been trying to see, you know, what is the number heard from. Uh, every, only thing I got was it's three more years. So, but nobody's saying what the salary is. And so, but they did every, not release the terms. They didn't say it was a three-year deal. They didn't release any of the financial terms. But that usually has to be reported by the institution at the end of the season. So A.D. Robinson had, has time uh, before they feel those financial questions. Right. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> it, it, our schools, and I'm just going to say this, our black schools, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to these contracts, they're scared to talk about numbers, man. Right, right. <laughs> You go to these PWIs, PWIs be like, uh, Coach Saban got a five-year, $800,000 million deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, or even when the conferences sign media rights. You ever notice that too? Media rights too. Uh, the Big Ten signed a $250 million per year contract that right. extends for 18 million years. Um, Commissioner SWAT, Commissioner MIAC, Commissioner CIWA, Commissioner SIC. What were your financial terms with HBCU Go? Oh, we don't need to talk about that. It's just we. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's crazy when it gets to numbers. We shy away from it and we just don't talk about it. I don't understand it either. Look, man, I. I I asked Byron Allen specifically, Byron, how much was the contract between you and the SWAT? Well, we what's what should be more important is the fact it's a ten year deal and they started from zero and now they're at the place they are. What's that place, Byron? Well, it's a ten year deal. <laughs> It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, it, yeah, I was the one who found out it was 10-year, $120 million deal, and they were livid. I don't understand. Why are you livid? Wouldn't you want to, if this is something that you believe it was a good deal, wouldn't you want to say, hey, 
I got something good. Right. Right. We did something good. Look at look at what we have done. And this is going to be very crucial because what's coming up is that ESPN contract. Right. More and more TV contract deals are going to come into play after this year because, you know, a lot of teams did well in numbers. But what's surprising in this contract extension is year two. So now that A.D. Robinson put that out, who's the next guy? Could it be a Cozy? Could it be a Coach Dishman? More and more coaches are going to start reconstructing their deals because With Robinhood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robinhood Gold allows the resourceful individual to earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Get the privileges of the high net worth for any net worth for just $5 a month. Sign up at Robinhood.com gold. Terms apply. For product-specific disclosures, visit Robinhood.com gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood gold llc because of a productive year one and you gotta do that Kyle. because guess what it's a lot of division one jobs that are already open that are looking to fill it and so some of these coaches um maybe a southern miss who i'm told is going to be looking for an african-american coach might grab somebody so i mean you gotta kind of if you're serious about your program hmm. and I wouldn't be surprised if fam you would be next because Coach Cozy has a D1 background and he's coached on the division one level. Uh it's serious business. And like Eddie Robinson used to tell me, business is business. So hey. And, and that's that's the thing that we've got to be more comfortable in talking about the numbers. If you don't believe it's a good deal, in my opinion, it's just like uh, hey, hey coach, I heard you got a girlfriend. Uh, yeah, I got a girlfriend. Okay, what's her name? Where's she from? You know, you know what I'm saying? You're not saying anything about her. You, you Your boy's going to be like, dang, you know, what's happening? Mo ain't saying nothing about his girlfriend. <laughs> Make you wonder what's up with the girlfriend, right? Right. So, and that, that's what makes you wonder what's up with these deals a lot of times that our HBCUs don't want to disclose particulars about the deal. And we've got to come to a better place in disclosing that information. All right. That that's just my opinion. Yeah. And I said it, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> so, um, huh? You said the truth because it's definitely going to happen. Um, uh, more and more people talked about it when the, the first thing when you hear this new contract of Coach T.C. Taylor, wow, it's early, but they had to do it. Everyone, Everybody I talked to said they had to do it because of so many job openings coming early in the Division One, right? So you want to see your coach. And um, I commend A.D. Robinson for doing that because if not, uh, somebody probably was going to grab him. Um, you don't normally do these productive seasons in year one and year two. And like I said, Kyle, don't be surprised if someone snatches Coach Sears Bear. All right. Now, this also came out of Jackson State. <laughs> Mo Williams got a contract extension. And A.D. Robinson got another contract extension. <laughs> Now, didn't he just get one last year? Well, uh, you, you thought I—I I, could have sworn he did too. This is his third one. Huh? He, got, but he got one last year, right? Right. <laughs> hmm. But they well, couldn't. But, exactly. but they couldn't sign Coach Reed. That's all I'm saying. Well, Kyle, you got. That's what a lot of people are saying because the Colin Jackson State. The uh the baby Jerry Jones world, you know, of uh, the money that goes <laughs> the baby Jerry the Jones world. <laughs> the baby Jerry Jones world and and you know the word I got was Jackson State had a uh and kudos to the president at Jackson State. They had a super, super enrollment increase that they had to send students downtown Jackson. And I'm told that uh, you know, just a very productive year going on and money is great. Everything's great at Jackson State right now. So uh, 
They're trying to seal these contracts and <laughs> get it while the money is good, Kyle. <laughs> My gosh. President Dr. Marcus Thompson. Shout out to Dr. Thompson. He he he's he kind of say, hold on, my guys are succeeding here. They're doing something well. Mo Williams is turning around his program, right? I think what was it the other night? Uh, Jackson State in an exhibition game, they were leading over. I forget the team. It was a Missouri, Missouri or Southern Miss. It was a Southern 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 Miss, but they eventually lost in overtime. That they allowed right. Southern Miss to come back. Uh, I will have a chance to see them on Monday night here in Houston play U of H, the Cougars. Right, right, uh, right. So that's going to be a good one. Uh, but I have to agree with you. They're trying to protect their coaches. Right. I guess they're understanding long-term it, it makes sense to protect the coaches versus – haggling like they did. I, I still believe Tamika Reed wanted to stay at Jack State University. I, I, you know, I did, I believe the same thing, Kyle, but, you know, I don't know. A lot of people say, you know, the money that she was asking for, Jackson State couldn't come with at the time, which I think they had the so money. So all of a sudden, a few months later, it came. Right, 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 right. Come on, coach. Well, well, you know, I agree with you. I agree with you. You know, and everybody knows the the, the uh, blood between her and A.D. Robinson. You know, it wasn't – it was on shaky ground. Uh, but guess what? She's there to do one level. She's getting a, a, a wealth of money. You know, they, they really paid her well at Charlotte. So, you know, she's going to do great things there. But, you know, Jackson State, you know, it's a blue blood program, you know, and um, everybody wants to be a part of the car. Hmm. Jackson State, great job signing your head coaches to contract extensions. Last week, Ramblin' University, they signed their head coaches in baseball, volleyball, and they believe in softball to contract extensions as well. Uh, So I think a lot of the HBCU schools are understanding it's better to, it's better to keep her. (laughs) Right. It's better to keep them instead of trying to run out and try to redo this all over again. It it takes hard work to be able to build a program. So You know what I'm surprising about though, Kyle? Tennessee State hadn't signed Eddie George. Well, that's a good point, but also Tennessee State, like you mentioned, as far as financial constraints are concerned, that university is having some very serious financial problems. They were supposed to be fielding the ice hockey team for the men's program next season, and already there was a Forbes magazine article I don't understand why they released that information to Forbes magazine then instead of giving it to uh, a, a black publication. I'm still trying to figure this one out. But anyway, that, that's just a pet peeve of mine as a media here who covers HBCUs. Why would you give it to somebody outside of HBCU? But anyway, um, they gave, they laid out some financial terms that they are having issues that it wasn't a result of this current administration. We're talking about two and three administrations prior that has resulted in some of the issues they are having, as well as that Tennessee legislator that had money earmarked for the HBCU, but diverted those funds to other state schools that are more predominantly white schools. And, that wasn't right. And I think they they lost close to $2 billion as a result. You know, think about two bi- what $2 billion can do for a school of Tennessee state size, you know? Right. So um, that's something to look at as you well. Know you know what's funny about that, though, Kyle? Uh, 
being at the highest level of Coach Eddie George, he, as a leader, I'm very shocked that he hasn't came forward and talked about the financial part. He did. He had an interview. It was last month. He had an interview with somebody. I forgot if, if I'm not mistaken, it could have been on first take. It wow. could have been on first take. Yeah, I think he did mention the financial uh, constraints that they were having at this time. Wow, I missed that. Well, shout out to him for doing that. But, you know, I don't understand it, man. You know, you cannot run a college football program without funds. And, you know, when you hear administrators and you hear coaches, you know, that, that phrase, well, we operating in the red, it's just <laughs> – Man, it's mind-boggling. So, you know, shout out to these programs on, on trying to run things without funds, but eventually, um, you're talking about collapsing. So, yeah, man, that's that's something to think about, man. All right, coach, uh, let's uh, come back in two and two so we can wrap up the show. We're going to talk about predictions of the games of the week, and coach is going to also give us his definitive who's going to win the SWAC and who's going to win the MIAC. Yeah, I'll put you on the line there, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be I'm Kyle T. Mosley of HBCU Legends. I love rooting for the underdog, and this underdog you would love playing because they give you the advantage to win. Join the other 5 million happy players who have won over $2 billion on underdog because it's so easy to be able to cash in on all of your favorite athletes' performances. Compete against other players just by selecting higher or lower on two or more player stats, and you can win up to 1,000 times your money. For example, two of our favorite Heisman hopefuls who are also HBCU alums are Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders. Let's say Shador racks up higher than two passing touchdowns next week, we win. Let's say Travis gets lower than two touchdown receptions, we win. So just cook up the entries the way you want it to be and win real cash prizes all football season long. Underdog is the best place to play like a champion. You get to be able to download the app today, use the promo code HBCU Legends, and get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. Hmm, let me repeat that. You download the app today you use promo code HBCU Legends and you get $1,000 in bonus cash instantly? That's right. So HBCU fans, you can use Underdog Fantasy, join Coach and I, get ready to be able to win. You can do your pickums, you can do your higher or lower. It doesn't matter. You make the call, use Underdog. You must be 18 years or older or 19 or older in Alabama or Nebraska, 19 older in Colorado for some games, and 21 and older in Massachusetts and Arizona. And present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Or in Colorado, concerned about your play, call 1 800 Gambler, visit www ncpgambling.org in Arizona, go to 1-800-NEXT-STEP or 800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342 in New York. Call 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. All right, Kyle T. Mosley here with Coach Daryl Stewart. Coach, all right, man, let's kind of talk about what's going to happen today in HBCU football. We got some good ones on the list, uh, so we're going to go over those games uh, in the SWAC and MEAC first and talk about what's happening there. Um, but before we even do that, uh, I want to send our condolences to two families over at Morehouse College. Um, two young men lost their lives over the past couple of weeks over at Morehouse College, one in an accident, and unfortunately, the other one through some other circumstances right now uh, that we're trying to investigate, but I think uh, when a college, when you lose like somebody close to you, or even if you don't, didn't know that person at college, that kind of does something to you, right, Coach? Right. You know, uh, I remember once <clears throat> we had a, a band dance over at 35 and the young guy was a very talented trombone player. Very. I mean, he was awesome his first year and very quiet, well-mannered young guy. All he was doing was crossing the street and somebody struck him, 
in you know with the car and he he perished you know and um our whole band was just devastated man you know so i know that could be affecting people on the colleges so get some counseling if you need to and get some help uh so you can be able to handle these situations you know it's it's okay not to be okay that's what i'm saying all right um any thoughts from you coach yeah, it's devastating, man. When you go to college, it's supposed to be a great experience, a lifelong experience, something you can tell your children about. And, you know, it's just so much these youngsters are getting into. But uh, safety is a priority, and it should be a priority on our university campuses. Um, I, I've said it, Kyle, we need to, you know, when you talk about safety on these campuses, the first thing they say, well, these are young adults. But you know, they're still kids in my book. You know, you got you treat them like young adults, but they're going to make mistakes and um, they're away from home. We have to come up with great safety plans as HBCUs because a lot of them are saying, you know, hey, we don't we can't pay the police officers um, what they should be making. And we got to come up with it just every year. It seems like something's going on with these students leaving campus or doing such and such things that they're getting in trouble. So we got to come up with a safety plan because I hate to say it, you really, you know, when you talk about these big power five schools, you know, you don't hear a lot at these schools mm -hmm. or, you know, it's just not in the open. You know, you don't, you don't hear it a lot at a Michigan or at a Alabama or at a LSU. I'm just being ter perfectly honest. And so uh, we got to do a better job on the safety side. If we got to pay the police officers, let's pay them. I mean, I don't understand why it's a big problem to paying a person ninety or hundred thousand dollars. You cannot live off fifty and sixty thousand dollars anymore. And you see these big contracts that administrators are getting, coaches are getting. We have to pay these people, and I'm just so sit behind this guy. And we just got to come up with a plan and do a better job of protecting our kids. Good point. Good, good, good point. All right, Coach, let's talk about what's happening. Let's start with some of our uh, guys out east. Uh, they are playing the first games. We got Virginia Union taking on Bluefield State. How do you see that one? Virginia Union out of the way. Fort Valley against Benedict. Fort Valley. Coach Sean Gibbs. Hampton versus Villanova. Well, could be a big blow for Hampton. Hampton's doing a great job right now, but I'm going with Villanova. West Virginia State, the Yellow Jackets going against Frostburg State Bobcats. I have no idea where they're from. West Virginia State. <laughs> All right. Uh, Morgan State Bears hosting the Spartans of Norfolk. I think Coach Olin's going to pull it off. I'm going uh -oh. with North Uh-oh. Okay. All right. The Hornets are going into D.C. to play the Bison at Howard. Uh, Howard's having quarterback problems. I'm going with the Hornets. Virginia State versus Lincoln Lions. <laughs> I got to pause this one. Coach Cole, he he, he was kind of cold-blooded. <laughs> he said, anytime you hear Lincoln, you got to win. <laughs> <laughs> but a few weeks later, guess what Lincoln does? They broke a like a sixty game streak and they finally won the game. So anyway, go ahead. <laughs> What's your thoughts there, man? Uh, I got Lincoln. You got Lincoln over Virginia State? Yeah, I got Lincoln. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh William and Mary against North Carolina A and T. Uh William and Mary. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just after hearing that time, Kai. <laughs> I'm glad you brought it up, man. I've never seen a disgruntled alumni base, uh, just an athletic staff like what they put on in a town hall meeting uh, in North Carolina NT. That was that was weird. That was strange. But you know, if you're in the coaching business. They're not happy with their football program, and it was just a weird outcome. 
<laughs> Strange happenings over at AT right now. Uh, Clark Atlanta, they were hot, flying high at the beginning of the season, a couple losses. Now they take on Tuskegee at home. How do you see this one? Clark Atlanta, big upset. <laughs> Johnson C. Smith, the only undefeated HBCU team that we have in the country. They are hosting Fayetteville State, the Broncos. They haven't been the same this season, but they have championship and they would like to be the spoilers to Johnson C. Smith. How do you see this one? Johnson C. Smith and Coach Flowers all the way. Bowie State goes into Elizabeth City. Oh, uh, Bowie State. Okay. Central State takes on Allen. Central State. Man, that's interesting. Allen and Justin C. Smith have home games going on at the same time. So that's going to be pretty busy over there in uh, what Charlotte, man. So that's going to be interesting. Um, Bowie State, we talked about Southern. The Jaguars have to play. The Bulldogs of Alabama A&M, Connell Maynard against Terrence Graves. This is a big one for both of those teams. Big, hey, big game for the Jaguars. I'm told Coach Graves needs to come back to Baton Rouge with a win. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt on that one. All right. The Panthers of Prairie View are headed down into the Delta to play the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State. Uh, Coach Bob McDowell in the Panthers. All right. It's homecoming for Coach. Coach, I'm surprised you're not in Jackson, partying up with your, your peeps <laughs> over <laughs> there. Uh, Pine Bluff against Jackson. Jackson stayed all the way. <laughs> you saw he didn't, he didn't stutter on that one, guys. Um, Bethune hosting the G-Men. This is another one that could be kind of iffy. You know, Miles Crawley is out of this game, out next couple of games for sure. I think really out more than that, the way that injury looked. Uh, but Bethune, Bethune, could they put the upset on the G-Men? You're going to find out what type of coach Coach Mickey Joseph is today. Um, if he has his team ready, he's the coach that we thought he was. But if they fall to Bethune, Grambling is in trouble. All right. Alcorn against Alabama State. Ooh, that is going to be a good one down in Montgomery. The same way with Coach uh, Cedric Thomas. You're going to find out what type of coach he is today. If he can't rebound uh, off that Southern loss, um, Alcorn is in trouble. Uh, I'm picking the Braves to win it, but it's going to be a close, close game. Um, Coach Eddie Robs going to have his team ready to play football. All right. Before we go to the one I want to feature, let's talk about Edward Waters over Lane. Lane College all the way. The Maroon Tigers over the Golden Bears of Miles. We already know what's going to happen there. <laughs> <laughs> miles, 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 miles. <laughs> I'll save you the, the suspense there, coach. <laughs> uh, the, my Maroon Tigers, I love you guys, man. Um, Tennessee State. This is the only late game tonight. Tennessee State, they are playing UT Martin. How do you see that one? Uh, Coach Eddie George has his team playing lifestyle football right now. I got Tennessee State winning this ball game. All right. Now, let's turn our attention to a pivotal game. Texas Southern is going against the Rattlers at Florida A&M. This is... Coach Dishman said he feels a little disrespected that you guys scheduled us as your homecoming. <laughs> You know, uh, he's going to have Jace Real Wilson ready to play football. I think it's going to be a close game. But after seeing that contract extension, Coach Cole is looking at the same thing at Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Coach Cole is going to have his team ready. And it's homecoming. Close game, but I got to go with Florida. In there. You're wrong on that one, Coach. <laughs> Texas Southern is going to take it. They're going to upset it. Look. 
think about this. If Coach Dishman is able to win that game, then they are, let's put up the stats for the SWAC here. We didn't go over any of the SWAC standings. I for, please forgive me, guys. We're going to extend this program a couple more minutes. Uh, we usually shut it off at the hour, but we got some more stuff to talk about here. Uh, let's look at this SWAC, the SWAC, the SWAC. All right, standings. Okay, so Southern leads the West at 3-1, Alcorn at 3-1, but head-to-head -head they lose against Southern. Uh, Texas Southern is at 2-2. Two two. Now, if Texas Southern is able to win this game, Coach, they're at 3-2, and two. and let's say Southern, who are they playing again? Let's Alabama a &M. Alabama a &M. If Southern goes down, guess who is up in the, at the top? Alcorn. And if Alcorn goes down, then that means Texas Southern could be at the top if they pulled the upset against FAMU. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Man. Big if, big if though, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> yes. uh, now. <laughs> Coach said big if. <laughs> you could be right now. You know, but it just, I don't see uh, Coach Cozy losing homecoming at FAMU. All right. Okay. Hey, and, and you could be right spot on with that one, man. But I, I think uh, Texas Southern first, they're going to have to be consistent throughout the whole game to be able to win right. that game. And uh, it's Is usually that a televised game? ESPN2, I believe. I'm Kyle T. Mosley of HBCU Legends. I love rooting for the underdog, and this underdog you would love playing because they give you the advantage to win. Join the other 5 million happy players who have won over $2 billion on underdog because it's so easy to be able to cash in on all of your favorite athletes' performances. Compete against other players just by selecting higher or lower on two or more player stats, and you can win up to 1,000 times your money. For example, two of our favorite Heisman hopefuls who are also HBCU alums are Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders. Let's say Shador racks up higher than two passing touchdowns next week, we win. Let's say Travis gets lower than two touchdown receptions, we win. So just cook up the entries the way you want it to be and win real cash prizes all football season long. Underdog is the best place to play like a champion. You get to be able to download the app today, use the promo code HBCU Legends, and get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. Hmm, let me repeat that. You download the app today, you use promo code HBCU Legends, and you get $1,000 in bonus cash instantly? That's right. So HBCU fans, you can use Underdog Fantasy, join Coach and I, get ready to be able to win. You can do your pickums, you can do your higher or lower. It doesn't matter. You make the call, use Underdog. You must be 18 years or older or 19 and older in Alabama or Nebraska, 19 and older in Colorado for some games, and 21 and older in Massachusetts and Arizona. And present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Board in Colorado. Concerned about your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Visit www.ncpgambling.org. Here in Arizona, go to 1-800-NEXT-STEP or 800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342. In New York, call 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. Let's go here. I believe it's ESPN2. I mean, not two, uh, plus. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not two. So, Coach, I mean, other than that, I think Texas Southern is in a good position. Um, but, yeah, you, it's going to be tough on homecoming to be able to win that game. But, again, if, fam, you make some mistakes, you never know. Yeah, you know, very shocking, man. Um, and, and I'll say this, after losing a guy like him, uh, and everybody's talking about, of course, Valley, but I'm very shocking to see the Bethune-Cookman program in the shape it's in right now. Very shocking. And you're in the lovely city of Daytona, Florida. It's a lot to do. Um, you know, just, just shocking. I don't know what's wrong with Coach Woody. I mean, you know, it's a lot of excuses going on, but it's just to see the program like that, um, just shocking, Kyle. Okay. Well, right now, these are where we, these games are where we have the 
SWAC right now. Uh, SWAC East, of course, Jackson State, they controlled their destiny, right? Right. Um, Alabama State, if they want a chance, they have to win this game today against Alcorn, right? Uh, just to keep pace with Jackson State before the two of those schools meet in a week or two. So I think we got some good showdowns that will happen. And, of course, anything can happen in the SWAC West, uh, the wacky SWAC West, we call it. Um, We never know what's going to really be the the deal, (laughs) right, Coach? But uh, Southern... That's not a surefire win. Alcorn, that's not a surefire win for them as well. And uh, I think that we could see all of these teams except Prairie View. Prairie View looks like the only one that has a strong, stronger chance to win versus uh, their opponent this week in the SWAC West. All right, Coach, any last thoughts or comments, man? Yeah, Kyle, we are, we're almost winding this thing down. And I want to tell coaches, you know, I know you're going to meet with your ADs and your presidents. And uh, if those who are still there, uh, when you go out and recruit now, man, have a serious offseason program. Now, I, I know you guys, some of you guys saying, well, we can't have them but so many hours. But you can tell the programs that have serious offseason programs. Because, you know, when you look at these championship teams right now, they're not championship for, for uh, any other reason. They had great off-season programs. Um, the weight room was serious. You can tell these teams that have been in the weight room. And so, uh, guys, I'm just saying, go out, get your weight room uh, plan developed, and you got to have a serious off-season. You got to go out and find a quarterback. There are plenty of quarterbacks out, guys. A lot of them in Louisiana, a lot of them in Texas. Mississippi, Alabama, the quarterbacks all over. Go out and get them. Doug Williams told told us on the Black Sports Insiders. I asked this question to Doug. Based upon the talent from year one to now it's going to be year four in HBCU Legacy Bowl, right? Right. What is it that the scouts and execs want to see from the talent from HBCUs. And he said they have to improve on the drills before they get there and the weight room. Yeah. He said you can't be an offensive lineman and you can't put up at least 22 plus reps at 220 at 225 pounds right right as well as defensive linemen too as well why is it that there's not much of a priority i'm not in all cases but across the board as a whole because you got some guys below the curve and some guys over the curve but why isn't that a priority Well, you know, a lot of our programs are putting the finishing touches on weight rooms. You know, uh, a lot of weight rooms are just small little rooms. And, um, you know, you got to be serious when it comes to the weight room. Um, And then another thing that I'm hearing, um, I don't know how true it is, but the the strength coaches, they're just not getting paid uh, to be a strength coach, a quality strength coach that the big schools are getting paid you're talking about a year-round program that you know you i think seventy thousand is probably the highest in the in hbcus and that's that just can't cut it and you know uh i like to do it like they did it in the old days kyle if you want to if you want to have a productive strength program get that salary to the head coach because the head coach is overseeing it anyway um, but now they took that position from the head coach, and now they hire strength coaches. But it doesn't work for HBCUs because most strength coaches have families, and you know, it's just not getting it done in the weight room. Just not finding a quality strength coach for that amount. So 
Uh, my suggestion is give that salary back to the head coach and let them uh, control the weight room as well because they're, they're in the office 24-7 anyway. So, uh, But you got to do something because it's just so many teams. You can tell the strength is not there. That's amazing. That's amazing to me, man, because we're talking about strength, conditioning. All Southern that should be. Southern University is on their fourth strength coach. Four. I've been in that Southern University weight room. It has much to be desired. It looked like my garage weights. Now they had machines there, but it was dark. And I was very surprised. I'm just gonna say it like that. Yeah, we, we got we got to do a better job in that because it's just, man, the turnover in the weight room coaches is just like head coaches. Yeah. Also. You see, Texas Southern, they just opened up their new strength and conditioning room, and co- uh, A.D. Granger was with us, and he said that we had to be able to improve our weight room, our strength and conditioning room, because that's a part of the whole recruiting process. Kids want to see where they're going to work out and what type of equipment you have. If you didn't have, if you got a dark and dingy place that they're going to work out, is that attractive? Or if you have a nice laid out weight room and he say, we got the logos on our uh, barbells and uh, on our equipment and things to that nature. It looks like a signature type of program. It's a standalone right. program also. It's, a, it's not in the gymnasium. It has its own facility. That's another thing that is unique about uh, some of these programs now. So that's something to, to take a look at, like you say, Coach. And you, you just can't just do it like you always done it. Right. You know, so uh, anyway, that's just my thoughts there. Coach, any last thoughts or comments before we sign off nothing but you know shout out to these coaches and these contract extensions look forward to seeing who's next on next week mr most yeah we coach you want to do a recap game uh talk about the recap uh, of the what happened yeah, we can do it let's do a recap of week 10 in HBCU football and uh, kind of go apples or oranges and see if coach's predictions won out or I told coach he should have been looking at South Carolina State. I told you, coach. I was just so shocked, man. I, I know <laughs> coach I was going to rebound, but man, yeah. I, I, did, I was just I was shocked. Man, I was concerned how he lost control in that game, man. Yeah. I was, I was like, dude, whew. you. People keep on saying that these coaches don't have their hearts in these games. Psh, think oh, again. No, nah, think again. And then what's what's I, I want people to understand this. And when you look at Coach Barry, he's calling his offense on the sideline. Yeah. So that's 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 how much control and passion he has for the head coaching position. And that's one of the reasons, Kyle, and I say this to say, do not be surprised that he could be out of there. I don't disagree, and I'll be the first applauding him because Coach Barry is a friend to our program, friend to HBC Legends, as well as Black Sports Insiders. So definitely, I will give him a big kudos for anything that he does right now so guys don't forget black sports insiders we are every wednesday night at 8 p.m central 9 p.m eastern standard time being streamed on hbcu plus 
and you can also find our work on YouTube. That's another thing. Go to YouTube. We just hit over a thousand subscribers on our HBCU Legends uh, site. Thank you very much because we were at 600 something at the beginning of the football season and we're now over a thousand coach. So thank you for the support. Continue to, which I try to do as much content generation as possible, put up some new uh, videos from time to time. So as much as we can, we're going to be there. So please follow us like and subscribe that means a lot to us it helps with the algorithm and everything that these uh computers are <laughs> are weighing out man so uh that happens but coach we're gonna have a good week 10 and uh go to hbcu legends and check us out and support our podcast as well i'm kyle t mosley of hbcu legends with coach daryl stewart coach let's have a good one Thank you, my friend. All right. Take care. Bye. Holiday magic is in the air at iFly Indoor Skydiving. Imagine unwrapping the experience of flight. iFly is the perfect, unique gift for anyone who wants to turn their dream of flying into a joyful reality. It's unforgettable fun for all ages. Save over 35% with iFly's limited time holiday gift voucher flight packages. Turn dreams into unforgettable moments with the gift of flight. Go to iFlyWorld.com to purchase your holiday gift vouchers. That's iFlyWorld.com.